Alan, would you please introduce yourself and what you do? Sure. I'm Alan Williams, and uh, I'm a sixth-generation family farmer. Uh, my family's been on their land since 1840, and uh, I actually ended up spending 15 years in academia, and so I was, my last stop was at Mississippi State University. And so I've got a lot of experience in research and teaching and all of that, and, and then the practical experience. So in 2000, I left academia and went back into private business full time, uh, doing a lot of consulting, doing field trial level research, and, uh, and, and working with a number of, of consulting projects around the country. Uh, so you know, we have centered a lot of what we do in the, uh, in the grass-based agriculture sector. Uh, particularly looking at uh, the production of grass-fed beef and pastured meats, uh, grass-fed dairy, all of those types of things. So uh, we've, we've been involved in that sector of the industry since basically its inception, and so we've been lucky enough to be able to see the, the incredible growth. Tell uh, someone who's looking to get into the grass-based business about the opportunities in this industry. Well, that's a very good question. I, the first thing that I would do, uh, you know, for those that are interested in getting into the grass-based sector, uh, the first thing that I would say is that there are significant markets, premium markets that are available to them, you know, and, and so it, it allows them to be able to get out of the grind of having to compete in the commodity sector and to know that they've got premiums that are very steady, uh, very dependable, and that are actually growing. Uh, so this whole sector has has grown in double digits, experienced double digit growth for more than uh, a decade now. Uh, so their opportunity is tremendous. Uh, the other things though is that even without the premium markets, uh, what we're finding is that by utilizing better grazing practices, you know, like what we teach, the adaptive grazing and all of that, uh, by utilizing better grazing practices and concentrating on building soil health, that you significantly cut your input cost, you increase your productivity, your livestock perform a lot better, and so your net profitability is, is significantly higher. What's different uh, in a, doing adaptive grazing management versus something that somebody else would? You know, the, the typical grazing that, that most livestock producers have done, particularly cattle grazers, uh, over the last several decades has been what we call a, a conventional or continuous grazing system, meaning that, you know, they allow the, the livestock access to most, if not all, of the farm all the time. And so what happens there is that the, the, the cattle and or the livestock will very selectively graze. And so they create areas where they're severely overgrazing, and then eventually they, that kills out the favorable forages, and those areas grow back up in weeds. And then in other areas, they, they practically ignore, and so you don't get even grazing or manure and urine application across the farm. And you end up having to spend a lot more money on fertilizer, weed control, winter feeding cost, and you experience lower animal performance. Uh, but with what we're doing with adaptive grazing, it's a system of grazing where we're concentrating more on stock density per acre rather than stocking rate. And with stock density, we're looking at the total pounds per acre of livestock rather than how many head per acre. And we move them much more frequently. And with the modern fencing technologies that we have available to us that are first of all very cheap compared to permanent fencing and very, very portable and very easy to use and quite effective. You know, we can, we can utilize these modern temporary fencing technologies that we have to move our cattle every day across the landscape of our farms and ranches. And what we find is that when we do that, we have much more frequent movement in smaller paddocks with higher stock densities, 
that's when we start to build an incredible amount of soil organic matter. We improve our water infiltration rates, we increase our forage biomass production, increase the nutritive value of those forages, and all of that translates into lower cost and better animal performance. But you know, to do that properly, what do we need? We need records of what we're doing. You know, and, and that's where tools like Pasture Map come in. You know, we have to have a tool that's first of all user friendly, easy to implement, and keeps records on an ongoing basis so that each year we can go back and look at what did we do the year before and how do I need to change what I'm doing to further adapt and to elicit further response out of, out of my soil and out of my forages. So, so having a tool like that is incredibly important because it allows us to be able to fully track what we're doing and you know it's the old saying you can't manage what you can't measure. Pasture map allows us to measure that on an ongoing basis. What is the value of going back and seeing what you did on your paddocks? Like, what are the decisions that someone might make differently once they see their records? You know, by being able to keep accurate records on an ongoing basis, then it allows us to be able to, first of all, track our livestock performance and our forage performance. You know, and both of those factors are critical to profitability on a farm or ranch. Uh, it also allows us to be able to determine how we need to alter our, our grazing patterns, uh, whether that be through through altering the the rotation through the farm during different growing seasons, grazing seasons, or whether that is altering the height at which we graze the forage, either starting to graze or ending the grazing period for that particular graze, or whether uh, we need to alter based on the desired animal performance at the time. You know, for instance, if, if our cows are gestating or lactating, they have different nutritional requirements than they do if they're dry, you know, if we've weaned the calves off and, and all of that. So, so it allows us to be able to match up the resources that we have on our farms and ranches with the nutritional cycle of our livestock so that we can much more adequately and cost efficiently take care of those needs. Um, could you talk about the potential value of having data for the future of soil carbon sequestration on grasslands? Yes, uh, you know we're looking at uh, efforts that potentially could pay farmers and ranchers for carbon sequestration on an annual basis, so annualized accrual of carbon in the soil. We're also looking at a number of other potential uh, payments that farmers could accrue through conservation efforts, uh, you know, and, and even things like uh, the return of pollinators, uh, grassland bird habitat, you know, I'm working with Audubon to develop bird friendly grazing protocols and uh, and so we're looking at a lot of potential incentives here that if if we're a farmer or a rancher and we're already using adaptive grazing and keeping these records then this allows us to be participatory in these other programs that basically become almost uh, you know the secondary income stream that we get we get to get paid for what we do already and that's a wonderful thing so so it allows us to be able to validate and verify you know, those practices that we're doing that then allow us to qualify for those payments I really enjoy thinking about ranchers being the heroes of yeah, carbon exactly. sequestration instead of the villains of the you know, exactly. environmental pollution. Um, yeah, do you have any 
Um, do you want to talk about what you're doing with the pastor project or any of the other projects that you're working yes, on? Yes. Um, you know, right now we've, we've got a number of very exciting projects going on. Um, one of them is the pastor project uh, that is uh, administered through the Wallace Center and the Wimrock Foundation. We have a number of of other funders, uh, such as the Walton Family Foundation, the uh, McKnight Family Foundation, uh, and uh, Cedar Tree, and a number of others that uh, that, have, that have really been instrumental in helping to, to fund this work. But basically what we're doing through the Pastor Project, the overall objective is uh, to, to be able to discover and then implement agricultural practices that Re significantly reduce or even mitigate harmful runoff into the Mississippi River drainage basin and then of course ultimately to significantly reduce that dead zone that appears annually in the Gulf of Mexico uh, and that harms you know our fisheries, estuaries, all of that. So within that project what we have determined to do is to heavily promote and to do research in uh, grass-based agriculture particularly centered in the upper Midwest. Uh, so we've been doing that now for the last four years and we're actively promoting grass-fed production and, and therefore the need to keep the records that we have to have uh, to validate that. And we're also actively promoting the integration of cover crops and livestock into row cropping operations. And we're making a lot of inroads there. And, and so as we get more farmers involved with cover crop planting and then introducing livestock impact, you know, that further serves to reduce harmful runoff and, uh, and at the same time, you know, reintroduces these row crop farmers to uh, revenue streams from adding livestock back into their operations. That's so awesome. Another project that we're working on that we're quite excited about, uh, we call ourselves Team Soil Carbon, but we are a consortium of scientists and, uh, and industry experts and farmers and ranchers that have banded together and, and the scientists from a, are from a number of different universities, even different countries. But the whole purpose of Team Soil Carbon is to measure on ranches and farms all over North America uh, the soil health parameters, including total soil carbon, organic carbon fractions, inorganic carbon fractions, organic matter, all of that, that we're able to achieve through adaptive grazing practices. And so we, what we're doing is we're collecting data to combat some of the negative research that's out there that, that says that you know livestock are bad for the land, we need to remove them from the land. Uh, our results are actually finding quite the opposite, that once we reintroduce livestock back to our grasslands, particularly using adaptive grazing, you know, and, and not just continuous grazing but but very specifically adaptive grazing that we're actually much more rapidly restoring that land to its original native state our soil microbial populations are exploding wildlife populations are exploding our bird populations pollinator populations all of that are increasing dramatically uh, so the purpose of Team Soil Carbon is to validate that so that we can then encourage more farmers and ranchers to do the same practices. Any other projects? Well, we're, uh, we're working with a number of, uh, of organizations and farmers in the lower Mississippi Delta region to, and this is specifically related to uh, again, the reintroduction of cover crops and livestock on these farms, and and we have a lot of farmers who were very conventional commodity farmers uh, that are now actively planting cover crops and have integrated livestock, uh, and and we've been actively matching up grazers with the farmers so that we can. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's sort of the best of both worlds there. You know, the farmers get the impact that they need from the livestock, the fertility applied to their land, and uh, and the grazers get access to those acres when the farmers aren't planting it in a cash crop. Uh, 
So that's been very exciting. And, uh, and, and of course, we're continuing to work in, in, in the grass-fed beef, grass-fed dairy, and pastured meats sector, and, uh, and working with more and more farmers on what we call enterprise stacking, you know, where we're, we're encouraging them to look at multi-species impact and even multi-enterprise impact. And then we're documenting both the enhanced profitability and sustainability, and the, uh, the the very positive impacts on the land, you know, that, that those practices are having. So, uh, uh, and as a matter of fact, we've with Peter Bick, the filmmaker from Carbon Nation, and who did Soil Carbon Cowboys and Soil Carbon Curious, we have filmed a whole series of films relative to that, and they're getting ready to come out in 2016. So we're going to have some new soil carbon cowboy films that are uh, specifically related to the the multi species enterprise stacking approach. What should curious producers reach out to you about? Well, if they want to hear and better understand what their opportunities are uh, and again you know understanding my background that I'm a sixth generation and, and I have grandkids now so we actually have eight generations on the ground uh, that heritage is very important to me you know, I, I, I value that and I want my children my grandchildren my great-grandchildren to have the opportunities that I have on the land but for them to have that we got to rebuild what we messed up, number one, and we have to make it profitable for them. You know, they're not going to come back to the land if it's not profitable. And they need to know how to do it the right way so that then they can pass it down to future generations after them. So to me, that's what it's all about. And if, and if there are other farmers and ranchers out there that want to know how to do this and want to know how to be truly profitable, and sustainable, and not just sustainable, but regenerative, you know, then this is an opportunity to get that done. Uh, you know, we can, we can show them what we're doing, we can share with them our data, uh, we can even connect them with other farmers and ranchers that are doing this, and, and that's very valuable, because as a farmer and rancher I know, you want to see other farmers and ranchers that are doing this and learn from them and not just hear somebody talking about it or read about it somewhere. So we can help facilitate that. We, we do a lot of, we help arrange a lot of farm and ranch tours and, uh, uh, yeah, and if they want to know about alternative markets uh, and opportunities to capture premiums in those markets, we can help them with that. Uh, so this, there, there's a whole host of things that, that we can help them with and we can share with them. Thank you so much, Alan. Sure. That was very inspirational. <laughs>